All right, so let's do this, man. Mississippi in the building. Yo, man. Mississippi. M I crickle letter, crickle letter, I crickle letter, crickle letter, I in the building. Yo, man. No, we ain't cooking. Yo, the no, we not. We not cooking. <laughs> you say we not crooked. You say we not crooked. No, <laughs> the home of David Banner. That's what's up, man. That's what's going on. How you feel, bro? I've been uh, doing pretty good today, you know. All right, all right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, before we get into uh the conversation, why don't you go ahead and uh Introduce yourself. You know, let's hear your bad story about, you know, how you got started in trucking and what you was doing before. And how's the journey so far? Well, let's see. Got started in early 19. And before that, I was a machine operator and, you know, had a family. So I thought I, to, I might need to do something better than running machines. So I started running trucks. Okay. So that's how they got it. Okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So you, so uh, how long you was a machine operator before you, uh, before you stepped off into trucking? Ooh. Um, a good six years. Damn it, man. What's, uh, now let me ask you this. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Was, um, was stepping off into trucking was was because you was laid off or it was just something else entirely? I got tired of working around people. Let me be honest about that. That is the only reason why I got in trucking. Because I looked at the philosophy. I'm in somewhere by myself majority of the day. That's, that was my mindset yeah, of is. getting into trucking. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So six years uh, doing a damn thing, you decided to step out. And uh, what, what, where was the idea of trucking come into play? Well, I come from a background of trucking because people in my family had trucks, owned trucks, company drivers. So, yeah. I kind of ran from that for years. I'm like, no, I ain't going to be no truck driver. That's basically the mindset that I, one time, one day, just like I said, I got tired of being around people. All right. So since you had, uh, since you had trucking in the family, did you, uh, did you know a little bit about trucking trucks before you went to school? Or you you or did you go did you go to school or did you go to a company or was you trained by one of your family I, members? I actually went to school that uh, Squire program from night transportation. At the time, it was like a two week course, which that was horrible. Damn it, man! Two weeks. You think somebody learned to drive a truck in two weeks? That was. Yeah, that was hard. Now they got it at four weeks or something like that. Two weeks, man. I mean, they. I mean, it, yeah. it's a lot. It's it's a lot of stuff to be crammed in two weeks. And, but yeah, geez. and that, that. Let me tell you the messed up part about it was, it was in a standard truck. Let me let it be known. It is a lot harder to try to drive a standard when you have no clue how to drive a standard. In two weeks, though. Yeah. Damn. I. Yeah. I, 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 and see, this is. I'm. I, I honestly hate to say that this was these. This was these. Uh these programs that sponsored programs do they 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 cap you in like sardines and mm -hmm. and, and 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 turn you out like like machine bro yeah basically that's basically what they were doing like because every week every week it was a new crew coming in damn two weeks so yeah that's basically what was going on damn two weeks though 
So yeah. out of, out of that two weeks, man, break break it down to me. The you know from from the first from from the first time you got in to the time you got your permit to the time you got uh you know just walk me through the steps of the entire two weeks. Okay, this this is how that works. First, you, the one requirement they had you had to have your permit before you went. Okay. So I guess that's a one good thing, I guess, whatever. But you get there on a Sunday evening. You had to pay for your own hotel for them two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Then you had to be, well, you had to find a way to, the terminal, if you didn't say it, a hotel had a shuttle. So, yeah, that was another thing. Oh, but I was lucky Mi- enough. To- Mississippi, hold up, hold up, bro, hold up. Now this, now this is back in nineteen. I mean, probably yeah. things, probably things, probably changed by now. But, but we we talking about back in nineteen. You not the only. Last time I checked, it wasn't changed. The only thing changed is the the long the length of it. Like the it went from two weeks to four weeks. Okay. That's the only thing I heard has changed. Okay, so let me get this straight, man. Let me let me let me wrap this around my head. So, not only you had to pay for the hotel for the entire two weeks, we we looking at about at least two hundred dollars, right? At least, right? Or, mm, no, or did it, it, Wow. Oh, okay, so you had to pay for that. As the hotels around that area, they jack up the prices because they know what the the terminal uh, got going on. Okay, because I think I spent like ooh, almost six hundred dollars. Oh fuck. Okay, so not only it's that. A week. Not only that, but you you had to stay at a hotel that had a shuttle bus that could that could get you from the hotel to the terminal for school every day. Yeah. Okay, did did you luck up and 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 get one of those hotels or no? Say what? Yes, I did. Oh. I got looked up, got one. Wow. Okay, okay, go ahead, continue. Then after, after the first day, well, going to the first day on that Monday, you know, you have your standard, you know, getting to make sure your drug tests and all that stuff done. And, well, before that, I had to actually go back and do more paperwork because, you know, apparently they needed more because they asked for a whole bunch of stuff. So when people get into this, people don't understand how much work history you have to put down on these applications. Like, it is like, I wish somebody would have told me that. How much paperwork you have to do. So after I did that, the first day I went, I got an orientation. We went over what was going to happen and everything. What an evening, they did pre-trips. We had to do memorized pre-trips. We did that for like a week. But during that week, we'll have to go to pre-trip, and we'll start getting road, road ready, as they say. Well... We're trying to learn how to shift this truck and do pre-trips at the same time because they broke us up in the four groups. And I was in the four group. And I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. So after I was in uh, one of my group, we sit there and tried to learn. Then about that Friday, we had to take a test for the pre-trip. Well, the first test I took was horrible. When I say it was horrible, I think I made 
a thirty on that. Yeah, it was it was bad. So they said you had to pass the you had to pass their version before they send you to the state version to do uh do the take to get your license. So after I did that, I went restudied. And I had to do it again that Monday. Well, that Monday, you now, we cast out that. Uh, now this, now we this, cast out. now this is the following this Monday. Is a, this going into the second yeah, week. This is the following Monday. Yeah, because that first week, all we did is pre trips, pre trips, and road testing or uh, road driving. We really didn't really. We did like some backup that week, but they mainly went to the next week. Because we started, because they're mainly they wanted to do the road test. Right. So, excuse my language, but it was a shit show. <laughs> okay. Because you just think of my, all the stuff we have to learn, but cram it into two weeks. Right. So the last, so the last week, how, how was the last week for you? Because obviously you got your license. Okay, the last week was a better week because I was kind of getting used to the truck at that point until you had to start backing. They give you the little cheat sheet that uh, tell you where, how to turn and which way the wheel is supposed to be, which way the steering wheel, which helped out a lot. Mm-hmm. But that uh, Monday went over our backing in Tuesdays and Wednesday, we had to test out that Friday. So we had to literally, I had to do, a, since I failed Friday, I had to do my pre trip that Monday, which I passed with a higher grade that Monday. Mm-hmm. And I had to do my bagging that Tuesday. So basically, I had to learn stuff in two days when it comes to bagging, when other people had three days. So, go ahead. No, nah, I was saying, so by Friday, you you was able to go to the DMV, or did they test you out? No, they actually there? came to us. They actually came to us. Oh, they came to you to test school. you out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, the path they took us on, the DMV people that test us out was a whole different path. They're like, oh, this might be the path you go down and everything. No, no, that's not what happened. The DMV guy said, take a right. Mm-hmm. When we supposed to be taking a left, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> what, what you, you said take a right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, what's the problem? Nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, help me. So- I'm on my own. So to make you so know to make, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so to make a whole travel short, you 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 was able to pass and and you got your license uh through yeah. through the through the school via uh night transportation. Uh yeah. with, with with that said, uh did you have to did you have to sign some type of financial agreement with night transportation being that they sponsored your your license and are you still with night today? No, I am not. And to answer your question, night, no, I did not have to sign that, but they had the policy if you do not pay them like whatever you owe, they won't go after you personally, but you cannot be employed at night. Like if you quit night, you could not go back into that debt is paid in full. Oh, anyway, like why, why would I want to come back to night for after I quit you? Why would I want to come back to you after I quit? I mean, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> I think about it. I was in orientation with a guy. He was there. 
Um, he was at uh, before I went to school. He made his like fourth time coming back tonight. So I'm guessing. I guess some people. I'm like, nah, you didn't bro. learn the first three times. Nah, bro. We 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 good on the first time. I mean, uh, once you know, once once I, I get my a quitting night. And I was like, I have never thought about going back. Yeah, exactly. Once, once, uh, once I get my experience, because basically that's what it is. Once I get my experience, yeah, we 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 good because I've obviously the money, you know, the money and everything else must have been must have been, you know, not good for you horrible. to even quit anyway. It was horrible. The and I have a pay scale. There's a sliding pay scale. <laughs> right, yeah, it was horrible. I, I don't recommend that company to nobody. All right, all right, my bro. So, uh, so between between well, night, you know, between nineteen and nineteen and uh, twenty two. Right now, how many companies have you been with? I see. four. Oh, okay. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. All right. Was you was you fired from any of them, or you you just felt that it wasn't good fit for you? And no, I was not fired from either one of them. It was it was not it was not a good fit, and they was playing with my money. That that that'd do it. I'm a family man. Don't get me wrong, but I'm a uh, I work hard for a reason. That means I want to be paid. All right. So what? So what are you now? You 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 over the road, regional or what? Regional flatbed driver. Oh, okay, okay. So you you home uh, just about every week. Yes, I'm technically at home right now. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Man. I went out this morning, picked up, uh, dropped off my load, picked up another load, and I brought it home. And I'm doing a ten hour reset at home. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. This is that's what some of the drivers is looking for. You know, at least, you know, get with a company that you could get a little bit more home time while making that money at the same time. That's cool. All right, man. So back, you know, back in trucking school, you know, you you only went there for like two weeks, but now that you out and it's been a couple of years, man, what do you wish you what what do you wish they would have taught you that you had to learn the hard way out here? Going down the mountain. Mm. Going down like the that one guy in Colorado going down those mountains. Cause they don't teach you that in school. They don't even get they don't even bring it up in school. That's what's up, man. Like is that that is the one thing I wish they uh like something. You know, there's a lot of fears out there. Is that, is that one of your fears in trucking, going down in mountains? Oh, yes. 100%. That you're afraid that uh, that, your brakes, that that your brakes just might burn out or something like that? Me, I do a well inspection on my truck. And yes, I that's one of my fears of my brakes burning up. Because just like I made in one of my TikTok videos, they don't have Charlie brakes no more. Mm -hmm. Sure don't. At all. I have a 18. It don't even have a Charlie brake in it. And that helps coming down mountains also. So you ain't burning up your, your brakes in the front. But a lot of people will say, oh, you don't have to ride them. Okay, that's true. I understand that. But sometimes shit happens. All right, sure, I'm, I'm just glad my drink break worked. Because when I was at night, any trucks I had, I was at night for eight months, and I was in six different trucks, and neither one of my drink breaks worked. Damn it, man. You was at night for how many months and yeah. in, in how many trucks? I was at night for eight months. And you was in six and different I had trucks. Six different trucks. Wow. 
That's yeah, they crazy. was blaming me. I, I said, no, these trucks are just raggedy. And they was like, the, my DM, which is, he was a safety guy at the time. He was like, oh, back in the day, they didn't have uh, Jake brakes and trucks. Okay, this ain't the back in the day then. That's the biggest thing what's wrong with trucking now. People want to keep looking at the past of trucking. That, that Them days are gone. Let it go. <laughs> you say let this it go. This ain't the days that you can tell somebody, oh, you can run for six months, then you come home for two days. No, nobody's doing it no more. <laughs> nobody's doing it. Ain't that the truth. I, I know I'm not doing it. I mean, I did it. I, I did it in the beginning, you know, back in, uh, you know, back in 15 when I started. And, you know, I stayed out for about six months and came home but did about a week or so. But I only did that just to get my experience. Other than that, I, I don't do that now. <laughs> I don't do that now. I wonder, okay, this is the longest I have really. I had one time I stayed out a month. I was so stir crazy. I was like, how do people do this? It literally, you actually need to get out that truck and do 34 hour resets at a hotel or somewhere. Go home or something. Don't stay in that truck the whole 34 hour. If you stay on the, like, oh, that's my life. I stay on the truck. Fine. Sometimes go get a hotel. You ain't got to go get a, a expensive hotel. Just go get a something. Get out that truck because it's better with your mind. And I wish somebody would have told me that. I had I come from a trucking family, but nobody told me about the the psycho um, psychological analytics. Yes, when it comes to your mind in this industry, because it will literally mess your mind up. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yo, so you know you've been out here a couple of years now. What what is some of the, what what is some of the challenges you face uh, as a flatbed driver? Well, actually, this is my first. I have actually completed one full year of flatbedding. My biggest obstacle is nobody told me about this. Yeah, we would literally deliver snow. Rain, sleet, and all. We just like U.S. mail. And we have to be out in that crap. And it, it's either hot, it's hell, or cold, is fuck. Like, when I say cold, I mean your, your fingertips is, feel like they're about to fall off. And nobody told me about that. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get a flatbed now. They said, that's where the money's at. Okay. Yeah, no. It's cold. It's hot. Sometimes that you is the to, biggest. Some, sometimes you had to take a you had to take a little about a little 10, 15 minute break to get warmed up and uh, about the literally, same about the same about the same time to get cooled down. Literally, because if not, you will you will literally burn up, or you will just be like, oh, I'm just so done with this. I can't do this. Because um, we had a guy that got too hot and he almost passed out. And they sent a uh, message on our tablets that we need to be taking breaks while we're out there trying to do what we do. And that was there. I was like, I thought that was common sense. <laughs> Literally, I ain't been out here a year doing this. And I'm like, too hot. I'm getting back in my truck. <laughs> cool down for a second. You know what I mean? Like, you got people out here, veterans in this stuff. I'm like, let's pass this on. We shouldn't be getting tab. We shouldn't be getting message from my dispatcher. This we should be doing this as fellow drivers. Like, hey, you look like you're getting a little too hot. Why don't you go ahead and sit down a little bit? You say that should be coming. You know, I'm just saying. You know, that is that is not worth an ER visit because you know. Well, that's 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 what's up, Mississippi. Yo, you know, I I, I peeped you out on uh on uh on TikTok, man. Uh, you know, one of your social media outlets. Um, with TikTok, what 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 
you know, what was what was the story behind you, uh, you know, doing uh, content on TikTok? I was debating, uh, you know, TikTok because I didn't know what content I want to do. I was like, I was just puzzling. Like, then I was like, you know what? Just do an everyday life. So that was the behind the thing of me getting started with TikTok is it's not always going to be about trucking. It's always, it ain't always going to be about my personal life. It's just going to be about everything. Okay. I don't want to single out one thing because that's what one thing about trucking. We have a life outside of that truck. And that's what people don't put, put out there, which that's fine. That's them. But when you get into trucking, people are, you see the big, beautiful trucks and, you know, these long nose Pete, the short nose Pete. You know, these trucks do be looking good, you know. They can go 90 to nothing on the highway, but the person behind it ain't told you nothing how to get there. I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Shout out your, uh, your, 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 your TikTok so people can find you, man. It'll be Mississippi, however you want to spell it. <laughs> Three five four on TikTok, I believe. Let me make sure. Yep, on TikTok. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I'll right. take. All right, brother man, brother man. I I enjoyed our conversation, man. Thank you very much for coming on and sharing uh, a little bit about yourself. You are a citizen, my bro. So if there's anything you want to talk about or anything you want to share with the Lockout Men podcast, the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Men podcast show, man. Reach out to me and uh, we'll we'll get it in. Before you get up out of here, man, uh, usually I ask, uh, you know, truckers this because, you know, this uh, sometimes is a, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal. But. At truck stops, man, what what are some of the things that you dislike at truck stops? The way people trash them out. Mm. Like, that is like, if you was raised in the barn, that's fine. <laughs> but other people wasn't. Given it, given it, Pick up the- Give, give an example of a truck stop that 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 had that problem, man. Oh my God, it, you can base them anywhere, like like the one on Lamar Avenue in uh, in in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Let me just see. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> huh, well, <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying Stop that one. <laughs> Just saying, but it's like no, it's, at this point you can just pick them. But people wonder why we don't get respect as we do. This is why. But we all know it ain't everybody doing it. Right. We know that there's a few, and that will gives us a bad name. That's why we don't. We are not allowed to uh, most most all WalMarts now. Ain't that the truth? And Walmart used to be one of our uh, safe havens, but it's not no more. Exactly. Because when I first started, I was able to park at a few Walmart. Mm-hmm. But as the as the years progressed, they Walmart's actually getting worse. That is the one place you do not want to park. Try to park at for the night because you're gonna wake up with a ticket on there, or a boot, boot or or there's somebody out there trying to tow you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then I don't advise to do that. No, don't go to Walmart unless you want to be in and out. <laughs> you say don't fuck with Walmart, man. All right, well, well, bit Mississippi, man. Thank you once again for coming on, man. I really do it. I really, really do appreciate it. As as I always enjoy all my conversations with uh with with people I meet, man. Again, like I said, you're most welcome to come on to the show. And uh, and uh, we'll chop it up again, man. Yes, sir. 
All right, bro. Well, you tell your family I said what's up. You have a good night and stay safe out on these roads. You too, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate you. Yes, sir.